and welcome to this AE Basics Extra tutorial in which we're going to continue looking at text hints and tips where we're going to turn this word butterfly 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 into the wing of a butterfly and then we're going to animate the wing and we're going to have a butterfly of text flying around the screen and so we're going to be using lots of different skills we're going to use paths and have a little closer look at paths we're going to use 3D we're going to use motion sketch we're going to use shape layers and I just want to work through it with you bit by bit and see what we can come up with so far all I've created is the word butterfly 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 and I've got spaces between butterfly and you'll see why in a minute the only other thing I've got is I've actually downloaded a reference image from Photolia here's my reference image and I'm gonna try and create a butterfly wing that's gonna be similar to this one over here and it's always good to have a reference image to work from however I want this to one side so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to go to the drop down here and go to new comp viewer and you'll see that this one's locked and I can actually move it across so that I can just see that butterfly wing maximize panels the other side which is great and I can now go back to the other composition which is my butterfly wing which is here and I've got the butterfly wing to sort of work from as an idea of what the actual shape is going to be like so now I need to create the mask that's going to be roughly the shape of this butterfly wing now I'm going to do this very quickly because of time you might want to spend a lot longer what I'm going to do is select the layer and take the pen tool and I'm going to click and drag out the direction that I want to go so I want my path to go this way and I want it to curve around and come here so I'm going to click and drag down to complete the curve as you'll see so click and drag complete the curve and the curve is based on how far you pull the handle out however the problem I have now is I don't want the path to continue this direction I want the path to come back out again so if you hover over the actual end of the bezier handle here and hold the alt key you'll see it changes and then you can click and drag and pull the handle out to go the opposite direction so now the path will draw out from this point this way and I want it to go out and continue down to my third point here so if I click and drag I can start to create particularly that bottom part of the wing this is going to look something like that so that's the bottom part of the wing which is this bit here I probably want this handle here to be a little bit straighter out like that and possibly this handle here now if you start having problems with handles you can always go to the selection tool it makes selecting the handle sometimes a little bit easier so I want to take this handle here click the point if you can't get the handle and then you can pull the handle down so those two are kind of going to overlap a little now this is not sufficient at the top so I need to pull it out a bit and clearly I've got a bit more of a point going on here for this outer wing at the top so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to my pen tool I'm going to hover over the path and I get the option to add a point click it adds a point however as you can see that this point needs breaking so again if I hold the alt key hover over this point I can pull that down and pull this one round holding the alt key and create a bit more of a point which is going to do the job for us and give us roughly what we're looking for so you can spend longer on this than I'm going to spend I'm just going to have a quick go at this to an idea of what it should look like you might want to spend longer but I'm just going to go with roughly about that now that's pretty much right except these points aren't aligned so what I want to do is align those points because this is going to be where the wing attaches to the body so I'm going to click the box down here to select my rulers and as we've done before I'm going to hover over this ruler and drag out a point to there and then all I need to do is take my selection tool and I can lock these points or snap these points to that line and now I know that they're all in place and we'll leave that as is because we're going to use those a bit later on we're going to use this ruler a bit later on so all I need to do now is snap butterfly 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 to this path so I can go down to my text open up text if it's not open go to path options open up path options and where it says path none take that to mask one and butterfly 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 has kind of snapped but it looks awful so we need to make some changes so if we look at the options under path we can see that one says forced alignment which will force the beginning and the end of that text to go to the beginning and the end of our path so let's click force alignment and it forces it to align which is brilliant next thing we need to do is make the butterfly at the top and not at the bottom so if I do reverse path suddenly butterflies at the top but it's not quite right so what I actually need to do is start adding some spaces into this line or taking spaces away to try and get these to line up better so I'm just going to double click in here so I get the text tool click 
let's see if I add some spaces in that's going to drop that one up so I might want to add some spaces in here to move butterfly back on that line and maybe take a couple out of there just to get a feel for how we can make it look and maybe take a couple out of here as well and you can fool around Oops. and you can fool around to your heart's content until you get something that looks roughly how you want it to look I'm just going to stay with that for the sake of time now if I click away you'll see that all I've got is butterfly 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 sort of curved around but I haven't really got a wing so what I want to do is fill in the space with a shape layer underneath but to be able to do the shape layer, what I really want to do is copy and paste this mask path that I've created. So what I'm going to do is go down to my layer and open up my mask. And then I'm going to click on the word mask path, which is this purple path I've got, and control C to copy. Now I'm going to shut that layer down. And I'm going to deselect it because I actually want to create a shape layer. And to create a shape layer, first you need nothing selected. Then you can click on your pen tool and here are your options. So I've got a radial gradient fill and just an ordinary stroke. So let's just have a look at the fill. I've got a radial gradient which is quite bizarre. You can add and take away points by simply clicking on them and dragging and dropping them. So if I want to add those back in, I can click and add points. So you can click and add points however you like to a radial gradient just to make things look a little bit more interesting. So we'll go with that just to, to give us a slightly weirder look. And you can pull these around and if you want a very sharp transition you can pull these for sharp transitions these gamma points but I'll go with that click OK so I've now got a fill and a stroke a nice grey stroke six pixels wide but to do this what we need to do is create just any old shape with the pen tool so one two points that's all you need to do because we're now going to paste in the path from the other layer onto this shape that we've created so here's the shape layer it's all created in the timeline if you open up path one and select the word path and control V to paste what we've already copied you'll see that the path that we had for the mask has been copied onto this shape layer okay it's not in quite the right place but it is correct so what I'm going to do now is go back to my selection tool and I'm going to go down my layer and look I've got transforms for shape one now if I open up the transforms for the shape I can actually change its position so I can pull it across so it's on the line and then I can pull it up so that it fits exactly over the butterfly text like that that's perfect okay so that's in the right place but can you see that we can't see any of this lovely radial gradient we've got now I have selected the selection tool and you kind of don't see these unless you select the selection tool but notice up here these are the controls for our radial gradient if I drag that down here I can now play with my radial gradient to my heart's content until I get the kind of look that I want however it might be on the wing however big or however small I want it to be so you can play with the radial gradient you can play with the colors you can just have have fun with all these these sorts of things to create your shape layer now that I've created the shape layer what I'm actually going to do is shut it down and move it below the text layer so that I can clearly see butterfly 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 and now I have created my butterfly wing and you'll see that I've got my composition that says butterfly wing okay so I've kind of created the butterfly wing what I can do now is I can pre-compose these layers I can move them together to create a single item so I'm selecting them both in CS5 you need to go to layer pre-compose but in CS6 what we can do is select both layers and we can right click on them and choose pre-compose and we can actually call this wing complete OK, move all attributes and click OK. Now that is a 2D layer. And what we actually want to do is eventually have this layer flapping. So to make it flat, the first thing we need to do is make it a 3D layer. Now if you don't have your buttons here, remember you've got the toggle switches and modes here, or F4 to go between them. So just click the toggle switches and mode or hit F4 until you see the option to make it a 3D layer. And then you can click 3D layer first thing it tells us is that the anchor point is separate from the layer and we want this anchor point on the actual wing so we need to move this anchor point to the wing the best way of doing that is with the pan behind tool there's the pan behind tool click on that 
then we can take this anchor point and just move it and it snaps as you see to that line which is really very helpful then go back to the selection tool and now we're ready to rotate it now if we select the layer and we hit R for rotation we can rotate it around these various axes we're going to want to rotate it around the Y axis so we want it to go backwards and forwards so if I just take around the Y axis and I start pulling that backwards and forwards you'll see that that's going to rotate around the layer which is exactly what we want so I'm going to right click to reset that and then we're going to have a little think about what we want to do we want it to start say closed so we'll click the stopwatch and we'll take that to minus 90 so it's going to be closed minus 90 is about there and then at about one one and a half seconds we're going to want to have it open so zero and then we probably at say three seconds want to have it closed again so I can take that first one copy and paste and then we probably want to do the same thing one more time so if we go to four and a half seconds take these last two keyframes and copy and paste those we're going to have a similar movement so it's going to go closed open closed open closed okay that's perfect that's exactly what we want closed open closed open closed so that's given us plenty of time for people to read the text before the butterfly then gets really busy with its actual flying and so from this point onwards we're going to want the wings to go from 90 degrees or from minus 90 degrees to plus 90 degrees as the butterfly flies but we can't really do it on this layer very easily without doing hundreds of keyframes so what we need to do is split this layer now control shift or command shift D would actually split the layer there's also a menu up here so if you go to edit you'll see that split layer control shift or command shift D splits the layer into two I'm going to shut down this bottom layer which you don't need to see but this is going to be the fast flap layer so I'm going to select that layer and I'm going to hit R for rotation it starts up which is exactly where we want and now we want to do a fast flap all the way down and all the way back up again so let's go forward just a few frames say so half a second at the most and then let's take that to, to 90 degrees it started at minus 90 so just click in there take it to 90 so now it's gone completely from one to another so it starts at the top and goes all the way down and then we want it to come all the way back up again so go forward to say one second and then take that first keyframe here control copy paste and now what we want is these three keyframes so it's going to go from completely up to completely down to completely back up again that's a flap and we want that flap to be duplicated down the timeline but we don't want to duplicate these earlier keyframes so what we can do is we can select those ones and just hit delete the other thing we might want to do at some stage is actually change the keyframe types as well because these keyframes are linear keyframes and we might find an easy ease keyframe is going to look a lot better so if we right click on those we can go down to keyframe assistant easy ease or alternatively you could have hit F9 on your keyboard in fact we ought to do it for this layer as well so if we hit R for rotation select those ones right click on those and make those easy ease as well the whole thing's going to look just that little bit smoother if we do that right now we've done these three keyframes the one complete flap we want that flap to continue to animate down the timeline now we've used this expression in previous tutorials what we're going to do is create a loop out expression to make the timeline loop out the rest of these keyframes down the timeline so alt click on the stopwatch for rotation and type the loop out cycle expression which is L O O P capital O U T open brackets speech marks C Y C L E speech marks close bracket and then enter on the number pad and now that wing complete will continue to animate all the way down the timeline and if you're ever unsure as to whether this really is 3D what you can do is you can go to a different view at the moment we're on active camera but if you go down to custom view you get a different view and you can hit C for the camera tool or select the camera tool and you can kind of orbit around this we're now going to go back to the selection tool and you can see that that is really moving full 90 degrees a full 180 degrees I ought to say so it's starting at one point which is there going all the way through to the other point and all the way back again 
you know, if you want to see it from different angles, again, camera tool, and then left mouse just to, to move around and have a closer look. So you can see that that really is flapping from one side to the other.